There you heard from Stuart Mitchell, the chairman of New Zealand Rugby, who I kind of think not so subtly implying that somehow it was the public and the media's fault, this whole balls up that's been going on. But regardless of, Ian Foster has kept his job. Well, 81, 81, 82, 81 test veteran of the All Blacks and the man who was sitting next to Nisbo in the commentary box at Alice Park. Justin Marshall joins us again. Welcome back, Marshy. Yes, good afternoon, Marty. Uh, nice to be back into New Zealand. It only took me, what, hmm, to descend below the clouds to see my first rain um, in three weeks. Wow, <laughs> Typical okay. bloody awkward, isn't it? But yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, glad that you're back and, and straight back into it, you know, um, and thanks for joining us because I know this is a really short notice. Uh, they call it at 2.30. Yeah. The whole show goes out the window. I'm not moaning about that. This is part of the buzz of doing radio. First and foremost, your initial reaction, is this good or bad? Well, I think the key thing is there's clear direction, so it has to be a positive. Uh, you know, the, the fact that there was so much conjecture so much murky water about how the, the future was going to look through to the end of the Rugby World Cup. Well, quite clearly, it's now being significantly made um, in a matter-of-fact way that you know, Ian Foster is unequivocally the, the head coach through until the end of the Rugby World Cup, um, and there will be no more reviews. Uh, there'll be no more debates about whether or not after uh, performances that are unacceptable... Uh, his job should come up uh, um, for review again. So, look, in, in terms of a direction, uh, yeah, I, I guess in, in a nutshell, it is a, it is a positive. Is there a bit of re recency bias attached to this, Justin, given the fact that after the win in Joe Berg, which, you know, you kind of get the feeling that all of a sudden it, it may have influenced general public opinion, but also, more importantly, the senior All Blacks, and I reckon Adi Saver especially, climbing aboard the Foster train. I think probably there's two parts of that question that I want to answer. The, the first one, Marty, is I was a little bit concerned about some of the messaging coming uh, from the New Zealand Rugby Union. Uh, Mark Robinson um, said it two or three times, which was the fact that, uh, yeah, which alludes to your question, the fact that they uh, were really proud of the performance at Alice Park against adversity and, and a cauldron that is Alice Park and the way that the players went out there and did the country cloud, played like all played like all blacks and and got a great result, you know, given all the circumstances and the pressure that that they are under. Um, yes, I agree with all that. But that's what we expect every week from our all blacks. Yep. And that's the type of performance that we expect every week, every test, no matter who the opposition is, from our all blacks. I think the conjecture and the position that the pressure has come from is because the performance levels have been way below where they were at Alice Park. And that's where the pressure's culminated. Now, like I sat there at Alice Park and I saw proudly those All Blacks play like All Blacks should. They didn't kick possession away needlessly. They didn't make mundane basic errors. They played at tempo. They were creative. They played... A whole rugby field. They broke out of their 22 three or four times. They played like they should be playing. And if they dropped that test match, it probably it, it would have hurt. But at least I could say, hey, we went out there, we played like all back blacks, and we fought, and, and, we, and we played hard, and the opposition got us at the end of the day. We haven't seen that. So I'm a little bit concerned that they feel that, that you know, that, that, that performance was a catalyst for Ian Foster um, retaining his job. I don't feel that uh, those, those those points make me feel uneasy because it means that they, uh, you know, the, the performances against Ireland, Italy last year on the India tour when the only way that they could come up with scoring a try was by driving malls. I think they got four and then lost to Ireland and then lost to France. That that's how all Blacks should play. So that, that, that's part of the equation. The second part of it, um, you know, to be, to, to be quite frank, there is no doubt in my mind that the, 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 that the players have had a massive part to play in Ian Foster being retained. It, it's, it's quite clear that they have come out publicly, they have galvanised together in, in total support for him, which is a good thing because if the players don't want to play for the coach, then the coach shouldn't be there. But the players quite obviously do. 
Um, so, yeah, that, 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 that to me is quite clear. I, I think once the players came out in support, the New Zealand Rugby Union, if they had any exterior plans or motives or had had conversations with anyone else or were thinking about something different, they were dead in the water. They, they, could, they, they were backed into a corner by the players because the players have quite um, clearly said that they believe in this coach and they will play for him until, they, uh, and, and, uh, you know, until there's nothing left in them. Justin Marshall is with us. So I just want to go back to what you're saying right at the start, that you expect and you demand that performance from the All Blacks every time the All Blacks play a test match. I think all we do, all of us fans do that. When you were when you were in the team and we were going through our worst in 98, we lost the semi-final in 99 and so forth. John Hart was the coach. At any stage, as an All Black in that dressing room, when it's just you and the other guys in black, do you talk about we're going to play and win this for the coach? I would expect that you win it for each other first, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you win it. You win it for the All Blacks and our nation and our and our rugby history. And you don't obviously no. no there was never any conversation about winning it for the coach. You know, we all we all feel pressure when the coach is under pressure. The players are under pressure because at the end of the day, if the coach is under pressure, it means that the team is not performing and not performing on the field. That's the only way a coach becomes under pressure. So, no, at, at no stage was it about playing for the coach. But what you want to do is have a coach creating an environment to enable you to play and play well and, and to play like all boys. And, and, and that, 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 that is paramount. And if, if a coach is not allowing you to do that, not allowing players and individuals to be expressive, not coaching the style of rugby um, that all blacks and New Zealand rugby players have in their blood, the way that we play. We play it like no other nation in the world. Mm. You know, we're, we're not just physical like South Africa. We're physical, but we're also skillful. We're not just skillful like Australia. We've got high skills, but then we've got that physicality worries them. You know, we've got a great set piece. We're not, we're, we're not, but we're not, we're not mindset on just set piece because we've got a balance. So yeah, it's all of those things that encourage the All Blacks to play the way that every kid plays when he picks the ball up at five years old. All we've ever wanted to do with it is pass it before we kick it beat a defender before getting tackled by him. That's, that's in our blood. I'm just, I mean, you know, the more you talk, I'm just going back to that game and in my mind, uh, the, you know, the ferocity that we played with, the tactics that we played with, the, just, there was just so much clarity at times. I love that word that we, that, we, that, that we played it. Did it need us to be forced into this desperate situation to, to, to play like that, Justin? Or you may have already answered that question because I, I, I hope it doesn't. But what I'm trying to get at is, what did you see from that players that maybe Jason Ryan brought, or, or maybe Ian Foster as the backline attack coach brought? I mean, did you see any kind of definitive thing in that performance that said, "Hey, the coaching might have changed, or there might have been something different"? Well, they, but yes, I did. They, they certainly started to click in areas where we had been way off. I managed to bump into Jason Ryan and, and walk with him through. It sounds awful, doesn't it? Through a, through a shopping mall. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby blokes walking through a shopping mall in South Africa, holding hands. Yeah, no, I just, anyway, just got to say, um, sorry, so who was the guy that waited outside the shoe <laughs> shop while the other guy was in it? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you go with me, I'm not interested in anything in that store. But anyway, um, what was... Uh, sorry, he's so bad to coach yeah, me. Yeah, uh, yeah was, um, he said that he had been given the responsibility of the breakdown for the week. Right. Um, he said, and, and, and it had been an area that they'd been trying to sort of balance out, um, and no one had had, a, had really had a clear, I guess, um, initiative to be able to go ahead and just take it on on their own. And quite clearly, the breakdown was significantly better. You know, physically, uh, we didn't we didn't turn the ball over. Um, you know, even when Malcolm Marks was on the field, I think he maybe only got one, whereas yep. he got yep. four or five the weeks before. The week before. We got better. We got better fast ball. Um, so Aaron Smith probably had his best game in an All Black jersey in possibly a year um, because the clean out was much more effective. So that was a major difference. Um, there was changes made up front um, with with Frizzell and um, in, in the front row as well. Uh, so I think quite clearly we, we got a response there because the scrum was good. It was stable. Uh, the line out. We stole some of their balls. So yeah, in all areas. Um, you know, there'd been some work gone in where we were deficient the week before. We were much, much better uh, in this particular instance. But here's a, here's a fact for you, Marty. Oh. In 80 minutes of rugby, or the 70, 65, 70 minutes that Aaron Smith was on the field, he didn't kick the ball once. No. Not once. Not once. Not one box kick. 
I don't think Finley Christie did either. Um, so, look, it goes to show you that their mindset was different. Yeah. yeah but, you know, it, it is slightly worrying to me that, that it had taken them this amount of time accommodating this amount of pressure with shitty results to them finally to recognise that we've been playing the wrong way. Yeah. And I think everybody's seen that, you know, that we've been kicking the ball away, uh, giving it to the opposition. Uh, we've been losing the breakdown, which is stifling our back play. And we've been really scared to play, basically inside our own half, where we've always wanted to play. Yeah. That's where the opposition's at their most vulnerable because they have to set their wingers and their fullback and to a degree their centre for kicks. So they're slightly more passive in their defence. But we were showing no initiative to want to play the entire field. At the weekend, we didn't kick straight from pick-off hardly ever. Um, we did a couple of times, but the rest of the time, we brought them up, made them defend, made them defend, and then gave ourselves opportunities to get good territory. There was just a real significant change of game plan. Um, and I think anyone who watches the game and knows it well and knows rugby would have seen a massive shift in, in the shape, in the intent, in the accuracy but also in the game plan. The game plan was significantly different. Now, why have we not bloody well been playing like yeah, that? Yeah, I do, yeah. Throughout the Irish series, yeah, in last the year. first test, yeah. why did it take us this long? I don't know, you, your question you asked me, I don't know, 10 minutes ago when I started <laughs> this ramble, um, was, uh, was, was it desperation? Yeah. Um, I'd like to think not because it was too methodical. It was too, it was, there was too, too much good discipline, too much, method in there where players just seemed to know what they were doing. Richie was slightly different, than, uh, deeper than what Bowden had been playing, so they got, onto the, and they got into the outside channels more. Just a lot of things uh, finally clicked. And maybe, you know, we've got to give them credit that this is what we've been working towards. Um, but it was just so far away from where we've been that I'm like, mm, mm. I don't think you've been working towards it. I think you've just actually realised and probably had a, a sit down and go, oh, God, we've got to... Like, We've got to stop playing like this. Like, you know, I, I did say in the pregame, I said, to, well, you might not have heard it was on Super Sport. Like, they said, what do, you, what do you want to see today? I said, I want us to go out there and stop jabbing at things. Jab, 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 jab throughout the game and then jab, jab, maybe get into position, jab, jab. I said, just go out there and start throwing some haymakers. Yeah, knock them out, man. Knock them out. And, yeah, and if you, can, if you can stay with us or you can handle that punch and get back up and handle another one and another one and another one, okay, you're a bloody good side. But at least we're not going to die wondering out there because yeah, we're all point. blacks and we're going to be the kitchen sink. All right, finally, mate. You know, um, oh, we could talk all day about this, but I'll let you go. Look, um, I just want to make a comment to you. You know, I, I wonder how much of this has all been uh, necessary. I think it has been so poorly handled by Mark Robinson. I, and it feels like a bit of a butt covering exercise to me that the board get away scot for he gets away scot. Regardless of that, the, the thing I care about most is the all blacks and them winning. But I just wanted to say, look, even if you wanted Ian Foster as coach or you didn't want him, I think the man has displayed such dignity and character and class during this. He hasn't sp thrown his toys or spat the dummy. He's, he's worn it more than most have, Justin. And, I mean, you wore it. I mean, I've worn it. I mean, but, I mean, you wore it as an all-black, and, and, and you know what it's bloody like, mate. And I'd just like to actually yep. pay, pay some credit just to the character of the bloke. Yeah, and, and, to, and to that point, I believe that's why he has got that support of now the board, but in particular the, the players and, and his management team and his other coaches because Mark Robinson has been on the ground. He's been to South Africa. Um, you know, I had a couple of beers with uh, Mark Robinson when I was over there and he was going to every single training run. He was attending team sessions. He was looking at what was going on and, um, you know, I pretty much believe that he actually saw that there, there, there is a coach there that under that amount of pressure still has the buy-in from the players. They still believe him believe in him. He still wants to win and he's still got a good attitude and he's, he's handling it well. And it isn't an easy situation to handle. I applaud him for the way that he has um, basically conducted himself under such pressure and a lot of it's been, a lot of that pressure and a lot of those comments have been personal. And, 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 and that's when it gets nasty and is not right because, you know, you can make comments and you can be constructive and you can p p pick out points but you can never go out there and, and, and personally attack somebody and, and when you don't know them. That's unfair. So, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I certainly think he can hold his head up high how he's 
handled this last two weeks in particular. I really appreciate that. One final thing. So uh, I loved what he said yep. when he was about to come back from South Africa and he said, you know, they asked, you know, somebody had asked him, what is he going to do? And he said, I'm going to go home and I'll mow the lawns around the pool. And we've been joking all week about you get home and there'll be a list. Ian, the recycling's Wednesday. Don't forget that. And I was just thinking, so when you get home, do you get the same, mate? I know you've been overseas, Justin. It's so important, but there's this <laughs> to do, that to do, and the kids have got this. Oh no, I don't live in the cli- I don't live in the climate um, that my lawns have been growing anyway down here in Queenstown Bears. And secondly, <laughs> I'm not the All Black coach, so I haven't got a bloody pool. <laughs> so, <laughs> Always good talking to you. We're talking uh, again on Monday, Justin. Thank you so much, Justin Marshall. It's such short notice. Eighty-one tests for the All Blacks.